Greetings, friends. Pastor Edge here, bringing you another lesson from another legend. As always, thank you so much for joining us for this episode. Today, we are continuing our discussion of the legend Ruth and all that went along with her life. So many exciting things. You can see on the screen to start off our last point from last week. She was fervent in laboring. We said if there was one thing that young people struggle with, it is the idea of laboring, working. But there's so much uh, blessing that we can receive from that. So much of a reward that we can receive if we just simply learn to be laborers together uh, for the Lord. I want to go to a different passage of Scripture. Get your Bibles together, if you would, please. Matthew chapter number 6. Matthew chapter number 6. We're going to read a lengthy portion of Scripture. Unusually, we don't always do that, but uh, I feel that it is pertinent for this uh, lesson and this thought in regards to Ruth. Matthew chapter 6, get your Bibles if you would please, let's get them opened up, let's take a look at them. Matthew chapter 6, we'll begin our reading in verse number 24. Listen carefully please, follow along. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought of your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you are taking thought can add, uh, by taking thought, excuse me, can add one cubic unto his stature? And why take ye thought of raiment? Consider the lilies of the fields, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which uh, today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. A lot of things are discussed in this passage of Scripture. Don't, don't jump to conclusions. A lot of things are discussed and a lot of issues are faced within this passage of Scripture. But it's amazing what the Scripture tells us literally that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to provide for us. The Lord Jesus Christ is going to take care of us. You say, Pastor, it's just last week you were harping about the idea of laboring. We must be fervent as teenagers, fervent as young people in our laboring, learning to labor, learning to work, doing those things that God would have us to do, and being willing to work hard at it. We said this letter A went to the harvest, letter B stayed in the harvest. She got busy. She went where the work was. And then once she found that work, she stayed busy at it. She didn't have a problem working. She didn't have a problem staying busy working and doing the things that God would have her to do. And the next thought, number three, make sure you jot it down in your notes. Number three, interestingly enough, because of her work, because of her willingness to serve, because of her uh, ability and, and desire to get into the things that God would have them to get into as far as work and as far as labor, then the Lord Jesus Christ saw fit to favor her with 
blessing. Why was she favored? Because she worked hard. Why did she receive the blessing? Because she worked hard. You see, God blesses us. God meets the need. God provides for us. And He provides for us in such a way that we do not desire more. God is sufficient for us. And the only reason He does it is because we're willing to work hard. We're willing to stay fervent in our labor. We're willing to find that work. And we're willing to stick with it and be diligent in it. Maybe it's your schoolwork. Maybe it's classwork. Maybe it's going to class. Uh, maybe it's going to chapel. Maybe it's doing those homework assignments. Maybe it's uh, uh, those high school classes and the different things that you get into there. Whatever the case may be, there is work ahead of you. There is work that must be done. And we as young people must jump into it. And we've got to get busy doing the things that God would have us to do. And for what purpose? Why do we do it? Because God's going to favor us. God's going to bless us. God's going to do something special for us because we're willing to work. God's going to reach down. He's going to help us. He's going to mold us and do the things that need to be done in our life. Provide with tremendous measure those things that need to be provided. And He's going to do it. He's going to do it because we're willing to work. Because we're willing to do what God needs us to do. As parents, we delight ourselves to meet the needs of our children. And we do whatever is necessary to take care of them as a father. I would like to say that I do these things and I reach out and I strive to accomplish uh, these things that, uh, that my son needs, that my child needs. The truth of the matter is the Lord Jesus Christ does it even more abundantly for His children. <coughs> Spiritually speaking, the children of God are done. Or excuse me, uh, God does for the children, uh, all the things that need to be done, those things that need to be cared for, God is looking to provide. He's looking to give us a blessing. He's looking to favor us in a very, very special way. God is much more faithful, much more capable as a father than any father could be in this world, on this earth, us human beings, us fathers here, can only do so much. The Lord Jesus Christ is the epitome of what a father should be. He does so much more for us. He provides so much more. He's looking and interested in taking care of His children, looking for their needs, trying to find the things that they need cared for in their life, those basic needs, those basic necessities looking to bless us as children of God. We spoke earlier in this particular lesson in regards to faithfulness. It is truly the key to following God. And it is truly the key to receiving the blessings of God. If we are to be a blessed people as teenagers, as young people, as adults, it does not matter what age you are. If we are interested in receiving the blessings of God, we must be diligent to work, and then as a reward for that diligence, as a reward for that willingness to work, we find that God blesses us in a tremendous way. Matthew chapter 6 reminds us that God is interested in fulfilling the needs that we have. Why do we even worry about it? The Gospel account states for us. Why are we even concerned about our raiment or about the food that we eat? Why are we even, even thinking or spending so much time on those things and worrying? Worry, worry, worry. So many of us worry, but the truth of the matter is, the Bible says God's going to take care of us. God's going to do something special for us as young people, as children of God. It's amazing. There are so many miraculous ways throughout the Bible where God met specific needs. I think about the famine in Israel from Genesis chapter 42. God used Joseph to preserve his own family. I think about the escape from Egypt in Exodus chapter 14. God's people crossed the Red Sea on dry ground. The wilderness wanderings. Exodus chapter 16. God provided manna every 
day, the provisions were there. Crossing of the Jordan in Joshua chapter 3. Again, the Israelites crossed on dry ground. Why? Because God was providing. I think about the time of the judges in Judges chapter 2. Again and again, throughout this passage and throughout this book in the Bible, God provides His people with deliverers from oppression. People who would help them and strengthen them to do the right things. I think about David in 1 Samuel chapter 17. God gave him strength and courage to overcome the lion, the bear, the Philistine giant. So many times in the life of David, his life was blessed because he was willing to work and God was favoring him with blessings. Solomon, in 1 Kings chapter 3, he desired wisdom above all. God gave him wisdom, but in addition to that, he gave him honor, riches, peace as well. So much provision from God. I think about Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 17. God used the raven to feed him. The widow woman in 1 Kings 17, she honored God and God's man and saw God provide for her and her family in an amazing and wonderful way. I think about Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Daniel's chap Daniel chapter 3 and chapter number 6. They honored God and saw His miraculous protection. I think about the poor in spirit, the mourners, the meek. Those who are hungry and thirsting after righteousness, the needy people. In Matthew chapter 5, the Bible tells us that God will meet their need. He wants to meet our need abundantly, young person. He wants to reach out in an amazing way. He wants to do something special for you. And He wants to see you simply be diligent in your work. Simply willing to work and to do the things that God would have you to do. God clearly promises that if we learn to put Him first in our lives, that He will see to it that we are well cared for, that we are taken care of. He says, I take care of the birds. I take care of the flowers, the grass, all the different things that we see in this world in which we live. And then He asks the question, do you need to doubt? Do you even dare to doubt that I can take care of you as a child of God? You as a human being. You as a part of mankind. Can I take care of you? I take care of all other things that are a part of the creation. The creation that I spoke into existence. Dare you doubt that I can take care of you? Oh, but it's not free. That blessing is not free. That favor from God is not free, but rather it is a reward, as we discussed last week, from diligently working, from fervently laboring, from being willing to accomplish the things that God has for us on a daily basis. Young person, what are you doing for God today? Because that fervent labor is going to grant for you and literally guarantee for you that God will bless you in a special way. Why? Just simply because you're working. Just simply because you're laboring. Just simply because you're busy doing the work of the Lord. God's Word teaches us that every good gift, every perfect gift comes from above. He is the source of all blessing. James 1.17 reminds us every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And coming down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning, it's a beautiful thing to see how God, through the book of Ruth, meets the needs of both Ruth and Naomi. God meets the needs of people throughout Scripture. Countless individuals go through the daily struggles of life and God is there on a consistent basis to meet their needs. God is there on a consistent basis to do for them what needs to be done. But it's amazing to see in this particular passage these two individuals and we look at them and we see what God is doing for them. But it's not just for them, dear young person. God is interested in meeting your need as well. God is interested in doing something special for you. Are you willing to let Him? Are you willing to allow Him to minister 
to you. The blessings of God are abundant. They're out there for us. We can claim them. We can cash in on them. But the truth of the matter is, are we willing to allow God to bless us? And by that I mean, are we willing to labor? Are we willing to work? It's amazing because as we look at this passage of Scripture here in Ruth chapter 2 that we've been in for the last several weeks and these verses that God uh, leads us into and God shows us, we see that first of all, their immediate needs were met. Their immediate needs were met. Ruth chapter 2 verse number 15, And when she was risen up to glean... Boaz commanded his young men, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves, and reproach her not. Verse 16, And let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her, and leave them, that she may glean them, and rebuke her not. Boaz knew that she needed something, and she needed something now. She needed something right now. She needed to get something immediate and God was willing to prepare Boaz to be the servant of God who would meet her needs. He said to his servants, drop handfuls of purpose. In other words, look here, do it on purpose. Don't just, don't just casually drop things every now and again, but I want you to drop enough that can, can care for her immediate needs God is willing to do special things in your heart, in your life, young person, if you're willing to be fervent in your labor. If you're willing to do that which God would have for you to do each and every day that Ruth went into the field. She was able to glean. She was able uh, to pick up and to gather those things that the reapers had left behind. And she gathered enough food for her daily needs. The Bible uses that incredible term, handfuls of purpose. So in other words, as you're reaping and as you're gleaning, I want you to drop things on purpose. Why? Because Boaz wanted to meet the need. Boaz wanted to help her out. Boaz wanted to see to it that she had what she needed. Her immediate needs were met. And the reason for that is because God had favored her with blessing. It was all ordained by God. God is the one who brings us the blessings that we have on a daily basis. And God said to Boaz, this is the way I want it to happen. This is what I want to be done. This is how I want it to be cared for. And I want her taken care of. And that's exactly what happened. Ruth is a tremendous example of what can be done in the life of a person who's willing to do what God would have them to do. Although the field was not hers, she was being watched over and cared for by the Lord Jesus Christ using a vessel, using someone who was willing. God's Word said that He will not see His uh, the righteous forsaken. Psalm 37 verse 25, I have been young and now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. The truth of the matter is, if we're doing the things that God would have us to do, God will continue to bless us. Do we have hard times? Do we have issues that come into our lives? Absolutely we do. We struggle. We go through difficult times. But the truth of the matter is, if we're willing to do that which God would have us to do, then God in turn is willing to bless us. God in turn is willing to favor us. God in turn is willing to drop off what we need to care for our immediate needs. And watch this, not by accident. He's willing to do it on purpose. I want her cared for, Boaz said, and I want it to be done on purpose, not by accident. The immediate needs were met. There were things that she had that she needed right then. Her family was hungry. They were starving. They didn't have the food that they needed. But yet, while she was willing to work, God was willing to plan. God was willing to make arrangements. God was willing to help her with her struggle and what she needed immediately. Ruth chapter 2, her immediate needs were met. But then let's think about this letter B. Permanent needs were met. Permanent needs were met. Jump over to Ruth chapter 4, verse number 13. The Bible says, So Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife. 
Interesting enough, they became married. They loved one another. There was such a bond there that God was not just looking out for her immediate needs, but God was looking out for her permanent needs. God was looking out for what she needed in the future. And let me say this to you, young person. God is looking for what you need down the road. God is looking for what you need farther down the path. God is looking down the road. His foresight allows Him to see what we need and He can provide and meet the need even farther down the road. College student, you may be struggling. Young person, you may be struggling. Adult, you may be struggling, but look, God wants to help you right now. God wants to do something for you immediately. God wants to take care of that immediate need that you have, but that's not all. God wants to do something far greater than that. God wants to provide for you in the future. Ruth and Boaz were married. They were privileged to have a son. God blessed them in an amazing way, a very special way. Ultimately, Ruth became the bride of Boaz and married into part of the family. Obviously, God gave them a son. Now watch this. This son was to be part of the lineage of the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 1 teaches us this. An amazing thing to look at some of the women who God used to maintain the royal line of David. What do I mean? Down the line... This person would carry the seed of the Lord Jesus Christ. From this child, eventually down the road, would come the Lord Jesus Christ. It's amazing to study it. The genealogy, the seed, the whole idea. I understand, teenager, it may be a little above your head, but basically from the generations and the generations and the generations come the Lord Jesus Christ through the lineage through the line of David would the Son of God be brought into this world. And it's amazing to see how God brings us together and how God blesses us in a special way. Boaz marries Ruth. The line is continued. The lineage is continued. The genealogy is continued. Why? Because not only did God want to bless her and take care of her immediate need, but He also wanted to take care of her permanent needs. Not only would she need some food, not only would she need to take care of her family's hunger, but she personally would need to be taken care of. This is what Boaz did. It's amazing to see it. Women in the Bible who go through the lineage of Christ, who preserve the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, whether it be Rahab or Bathsheba or Tamar or Ruth as we're studying today, but we are reminded that God is looking for people that He can use to further His cause. There is a plan that God has for you. There is a purpose that God has for your life. And all He's asking for you to do is to be willing to work, fervent to labor, fervent to do the things that God would have you to do, fervent to stay busy for the cause of Christ, and in turn... The Lord will favor us with blessing. Favor us by doing something special for each one of us. Just as Esther was a wonderful example of love and grace, Ruth is an equally fantastic example of faithfulness and fervency. No matter what trials God brought into her life, no matter how many immense and sudden changes she had to endure, Ruth remained faithful to her authority and fervent in her labor. And for this, she was favored with blessing from her God. The God of Ruth served in the same God, or excuse me, the God of that Ruth served is the same God that we serve today. We're allowed to enter into this great thing that we call life. And it is, young person, truly a privilege to be alive. It's interesting enough, as we look at this privilege of life, we must make it all that we can make it. We must cash it in. We must make it account for everything that we can. And if we're going to do that, we must indeed be fervent for the cause of Christ. Fervent to do the things that God would have us to do. Fervent to work and labor. And in turn, the Lord wants to favor you. Favor you 
with blessing. Blessing you and meeting your immediate needs. Blessing you and meeting your permanent needs. Dear young person, today I want you to have a great week. But not just a great week. I want you just as Ruth did. I want you to have a victorious week.